Hey everyone, in this video we'll be discussing uh, different production methods of alcohol compounds. In total, there are three reactions that we can use to produce alcohols. This includes hydration of alkenes, which is covered in more detail in the video titled Reaction with Alkenes, substitution with a halogenated alkane, short as haloalkanes, and fermentation of sugars, for example carbohydrates in general. Hydration of alkenes is a reaction between alkene and water. Hydration of alkenes adds a OH or hydroxyl group across the double bond, which transforms the alkene into an alcohol functional group. The reagent of this reaction requires water, but more importantly, an acid catalyst, namely sulfuric acid. This is the reason why the reagent of hydration is collectively referred to as dilute sulfuric acid where the dilute part comes from the large amount of water that's required as a reactant for hydration. It is worth noting that hydration is an addition reaction that follows Markovnikov's rule, where multiple products, that is major and minor products, can be produced from a single alkene. For example, the hydration of propene can produce one propanol or two propanol. In this case, 2-propanol is the major product that is formed in greater quantity because the hydroxyl alcohol group is bonded to the carbon atom with one, two carbon neighbors, whereas in the minor product in 1-propanol, the alcohol group is bonded to the carbon with only one adjacent carbon atom. So Markovnikov's rule states that the major product will be the one where the alcohol group is bonded to the carbon atom with the greatest number of carbon neighbors. The second reaction to produce an alcohol is substitution with an halo alkane. There are two possible reagents you can use for this reaction. Option one is a strong base that contains hydroxyl ions. So this includes sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Option two is water. Now in this substitution reaction, what happens is that the hydroxyl ion, either coming from the strong basis of water, is able to replace or substitute the halogen that is in the halogenated alkane molecule. The substitution results in the formation of an alcohol and the leaving of the halogen ion or the halide ion. In this reaction, the structure of the alcohol product depends on the position of the halogen. If the position of the halogen, for example, is on the second carbon, then the alcohol formed will also be on the second carbon. If it is on the first carbon, then the alcohol formed will also be attached to the first carbon. Substitution with a haloalkane can produce primary alcohols more easily compared to hydration of alkenes. This is because primary alcohols are typically the minor product in an addition reaction such as hydration. The third method of producing alcohols is fermentation. The reagent or reactants required is usually carbohydrates, namely glucose, if we want to produce ethanol. Glucose has a formula of C6H12O6. Fermentation of glucose requires a catalyst or an enzyme that is found in yeast. Yeast, when added to glucose under the right reaction conditions, can break down glucose into two molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide. This method of producing ethanol is regarded as renewable because carbohydrates, so that is the glucose, can be readily available in crops such as sugarcanes. This is the main way through which bioethanol is produced. We will discuss bioethanol in more detail in another video. Fermentation requires specific reaction conditions. This includes the yeast, which is acting as the catalyst, and also it requires an anaerobic environment, and that refers to the absence of oxygen. The yeast enzyme can only catalyze fermentation when oxygen supply in is insufficient. In the presence of oxygen, ethanol can also be oxidized to produce acetic acid, which is not the product we want from fermentation. Fermentation also requires a very particular temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, and this is due to the optimal temperature required for the enzymatic activity of the yeast. If the temperature is too high, the yeast will die, and if the temperature is too low, 
then the reaction of fermentation will be too slow. So a fine balance between the two temperature ranges is required. Lastly, alcohol in the final mixture must be kept dilute at less than or around 15% by volume. This is because anything exceeding this number may damage the yeast cells and again cause them to die. In the absence of yeast, fermentation cannot occur.